No, no. Let's not go try again. What's a good girl? You're beautiful without all that. Ah, right. Okay, so it's a makeup bag, right? Derp. Okay, fair enough. And okay, another intellectual challenge. You were exploring the playpen and feeling quite lively. Le yeah. Like a ballerina, you grab hold of the playpen bars and lift your leg up, legs up to the railing. Wow, okay. Uh, Are you going to try and take some steps? Maybe be determined about it? Or daring? I'm going to be daring, because that's something like really, you know, that, you know, you can be determined, but you just let go of the playpen and you just stand there. Let's be daring. Let's try and take some steps. You're facing the wrong way. You walk into the playpen and fall right on your back. Your head hits like the mat with a loud thunk. This can be dangerous. Want to try again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the agony of defeat. You teeter on one leg for what appears to be like an eternity. Do a half spin and bounce off the floor. Uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm too quick. I should have heard that. A, such a not such a non clumsy ballerina. Good job, Griffinette. Uh what should I call your female version? Griffiness? Griffinette? Griffinette. It seems it seems a bit more appropriate. Griffinette. Griffina? Griffina. 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 It sounds like graffiti. <laughs> Griffina. I know. So you're garbage that's spray painted by liberals. <sighs> Mom and Dad are entertaining some friends. While you are minding your own business and sitting quietly in a corner of the room, suddenly a man with a big nose and a shiny head puts his face right up to yours and says something in a loud voice. Yeah. I'd be terrified. <laughs> and I'd hit the man on the nose. Mm. While you are sitting, sitting quietly in a corner of the room, suddenly a man with a big nose and a shiny head puts his face right up to yours and says something in a loud voice. Um... No, no, I'd be terrified, but I'd do nothing. Because it'd be like, what the hell's going what? on? How is that? Like, if you're terrified, there's no way you can just not do anything. Uh... Nah, I scream. You know, it's not angry, but it's like, ah! If you're angry, you're going to go, ah! If you're angry, you're going to hit him. So... I think you yeah. could be terrified and hit, too. Yeah. Ah. Uh... Would I be that aggressive? Okay. Well, I'm gonna go with my original thing. I'm gonna be terrified. I'm gonna hit him. Bam! You gave him a right on the shoulders, which feels rough and oily. You are terrified, but he thinks you are playing with him. Fortunately, Dad spots him and ushers him back to bother people closer to his own age. Success! She's still, she's Let's see your stats. Yeah, I'm a lot more social. I am still as gentle as a dump truck to your groin. <laughs> That's just scary. Yeah. Mm, I think you could have used a better metaphor there. Yeah. Or rather, a better simile. A foot. You're sitting in your high chair and eating your lunch, which consists of crackers, strained peas, and a mug of milk. You are just learning how to eat with your utensil. Okay, I'm curious because you know this is another. You know, this could be another play toy. Pick up Susie, fantastic plastic drinking cup. Try to use the spoon. Escape from the high chair. Uh, no, let's definitely not escape from the high chair. Let's try to use the spoon because we're just learning. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. If I pick up this cup, I might drop it because I'm still. Clumsy. I'm still trying to learn how to use the utensils. I'm going to try the spoon because the spoon seems like the lesser of the two things. First, you put the back end of the spoon in your mouth. You then lift up the cup with both hands and try blowing through the spoon as if it were a straw. Nothing happens. I'm going to keep playing because I seem to be having fun with the spoon and mug. So we're going to keep playing. Curiosity and persistence are early signs of inventive personality. One day, during childhood, you may find yourself attempting to rewire the electric hairdryer and have a shocking experience. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. 
I'm going to stir the milk rapidly with the spoon. Instead of place the spoon inside the cup and tip the high chair tray forward. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stir the milk. It makes bubbles. It bounces out of the cup. And, oh. Ooh, okay, so I hit myself in the head. I seem to like hitting myself in the head. I seem to be giving myself brain damage. You hit damage. yourself in the head with uh, the liquid that was in the cup. Not the fucking cup itself, Griffin. Fair enough. <laughs> I thought it was like a spoon would hit me in the face, but fair enough. It causes the cup to fly off in the tray and spill all over the floor. Fair enough. And the mother is quite tolerant, but... and doesn't understand my significance of my discovery. Um, I'm just gonna, uh, the way I'm working is I'm trying to follow like this main road and then branch off, so I guess social. While being taken to the park, your dad meets an old college buddy who is wheeling around a baby about your age. As the two dads talk, you casually begin to eye the baby with the, in the other carriage. Uh, I'll be curious, is this another thing? Put your finger near the other baby's face. No. Mm. You if can't I was in be curious and do nothing. Yeah, though. yeah. I'd be curious and put my finger near the baby's face. A baby, you wonder if it has all the same parts as you. Touch the baby's face. Touch the baby's arm. I touch the baby's arm. The baby touches you back. You're exploring the environment and learning about one another. This is called, this is your intellectual and social fears to increase. You seem to like one another. You have made your first friend. I get the feeling Aww. if I was touching the... <laughs> Yay! I made a friend. I get a feeling though, if I was touching so their adorable. <laughs> if I was touching their face, I'd like poke their eye. They'd bite my finger. I'd be like, "You made your first enemy." So, yeah, face uh, doesn't seem uh, very safe. Not to me, anyway. No, definitely doesn't. It's like, yo, I touch you in the face and get bitten. So we're gonna be emotional. Up until this point in life, Weasley Rabbit, your stuffed toy, has been one of your best friends. You take him everywhere with you, but he's beginning to get on in years. One of his ears is torn off, and a recent eye injury has made his face look like a little lopsided. Your mother suggests that Weasley should be retired. You wake up one day to discover Weasley has been moved from the place where you last spotted him. Uh... I'd be suspicious and seek information. Yeah, I'd I'd want to know where he is. I I, I you know I, you know he's my toy. He's my favorite toy. I want to know where he is. You confront Mum with the act that Weasley, <laughs> Weasley has not in the spot where he was last deposited. She claims to not have seen him either. You are. No, I'm not satisfied with that answer. I want to know more. I want to find where he's gone. But do I want to know the truth? Hmm. Again, this is this is Griffin trying to think like he was very young. We, uh, and yeah, a girl. and a girl, which is difficult if it was just one of them, but both combined is near an act of impossibility. I'd like to, I'd ask Mrs. Griff, but unfortunately she's preoccupied. Um, if you have a toy when you're young and the toy is badly damaged and your mother says that the toy don't try to, to rationalize it like that you you said that it's your favorite toy and it's my favorite toy no idea where it is it's my favorite toy and my mom knows knows nowhere where it is would you be satisfied with the answer you're quite young right would you be satisfied with the answer it's your favorite toy but your mom thinks it's damaged and it's beyond repair and he needs to retire so you go to your mom and you say right where is my toy? Would, and she goes, I don't know where he is. Would you be satisfied with the answer, or would you want to know more? I would probably inquire a bit more. A bit more, okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Mrs. Griff, because she's the only female around at the moment. What? What are you even doing? I'm, we're playing a game where it's a life simulator, but we're female. <laughs> oh, now it makes sense. Right. Okay. <laughs> so whenever you said that you'd be interested in casual sex, I guess you should have taken it from the perspective of the female, which is good that you asked Mrs. Griff. Yeah, yeah, I should have maybe given her a bit more background information on that, because I think she got a bit confused just with this random outburst. <laughs> I'm wondering why you've been asking me completely retarded questions. I think that sums it up. <laughs> now it makes sense. There we go. So what would your thoughts be on I casual sex? Be used to, I, I thought she'd be used to that from you by now, Griffin. 
How? What is? Why are you pretending so, to be females? Because he's already done the male equivalent, so we decided we're going to do the female equivalent. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 Fair enough. <laughs> She's just nodding her face and smiling and just like, okay, I'm just going to say yes to make you go away. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to buy you some makeup and some high heels for Christmas, Griffin. I'd rather she didn't. I'd rather she didn't. But moving on. She says we're not satisfied with this answer. Wisely you persist. This time she tells you that Weasley left because he wanted to be friends who who wanted to be with friends who were more like him. She tells you that next week you will have a new visitor, a brand new friend who will be just as nice as Weasley. Would you be satisfied with a new friend that would just like Weasley? And who's Weasley? Your favourite toy, sorry. Favourite toy? Weasley was the favourite toy that disappeared. Right. And you inquired deeply and apparently Weasley went off to find friends who were similar to him. And you were promised a new toy that would be, let's see, um, okay I'll just tell you wisely you persist this time she tells you that Weasley left because he wanted to be with friends who were more like him she tells you that next week you will have a new visitor a brand new friend who will be just as Weasley as you are and not satisfied is what Grimith says Probably not, no. not satisfied bravo you didn't fall for that line of bull hmm. <laughs> I like the language this thing uses parents are great at fabricating stories like this when they make fr mistakes you will not get your Weasley Wabbit back but your intelligence and perseverance in these situations make it harder for your parents to tell you made up stories to cover up their mistakes yeah. cunning this this game is really in depth I approve of this this you know this game makes you think and you have to think of in the head because if you think very just quickly and what it, what you think if you Try answering what the game, like what you think the game wants. It punishes you. You need to give it a good answer, not just a answer that you think it would do. I like it. Okay, okay. Griffin. I'm, yeah. Anyway, what's this one? Physical. Hmm. Physical, intellectual. Um, let's go physical. I've not had physical before. You are alone in the kitchen. Oh, good God. What? <laughs> Uh, and begin exploring closets and refrigerators. I'd be adventurous. Right, that's when you've been like determined to take walks. Apparently, you know you're able to walk around now. It's like, oh, hey, okay, cool. We get to move around and do stuff. Adventurous.